Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spare Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today we're going to be talking about remote desktops for Linux. So let's get started. So let me give you guys a little bit of a situation so you know what I'm looking for. Now I mainly sit in front of a Windows machine either at work, at home, or at friend's house, whatever it is. 90% of the time I am in front of a Windows machine. And one of the native protocols that Windows have is remote desktop. The software is built in natively and it doesn't require any additional software, which is a big thing because anytime that you're in front of a computer that you don't have access to install particular software, remote desktop is there. I've been using Linux for a very long time and I've always been trying to search for a remote desktop protocol that it can use so at least I could work remotely on a Linux machine without any frustrations. VNC has been out for a very long time. That's been used on Linux machines for the longest time as well. But to be honest, VNC has been great for remote desktop work just to view on certain things. But realistically, if you're trying to move Windows around, watch some media or whatever it is from the remote desktop machine, VNC will not do it. It just does not cut it. It's too slow. It doesn't compress the data enough and you get a ton of lagginess and that's just moving windows around. Also, when you're using VNC, it does require you to install an additional software on your main PC just so you could connect to the VNC protocol. Now, there are some ways around there if you install like a Java console and have the computer serve some sort of like console out, but honestly, it still requires some sort of software. Now, second, I've tested XRDP. Now, I've been using XRDP for years, and that's because it uses the protocol of RDP, which on my Windows side does not require any additional software, but in the underlying fact, it's still using the old VNC software. So that means you will still run into the same issue as VNC, where everything is laggy and it doesn't like update the stream fast enough for you to actually stream media. Regardless, I do like XRDP because if you're on the Xorg session, you are actually able to hide what you're doing on your desktop. So when you log in, it actually opens a separate session. So your main PC will not be able to view what you're doing. Unlike VNC and all the other protocols that I'm talking about. Now, next up, we have FreeNX. I've actually glazed this really quick. I didn't use it too much. Uh, it is a pretty good protocol. It is pretty fast and it, you are able to actually stream some media from there, but there is a huge latency with using that. While it does stream everything for you, it's not as smooth as I want it to be. Like you can't really play games on it or watch a full movie on there. There is gonna be latency issues, but moving windows and using it as a desktop, FreeNX or NX does work really well. It does require another software, so that's another downside to that. Now, other than XRDP, I've been using this protocol a lot, which is the NVIDIA Limelight. For a third-party program, you can actually use this software called Moonlight, which works for all operating system. I've actually been using this for the past maybe six months, and it's been great. I'm telling you, you could play games on it. You could stream media. Uh, the desktop is very responsive. It loads everything that you want, and it does a really good compression through the data. So you could actually use this over a VPN or over the internet. So yeah, this works really well, especially if you lower the bit rate from 20,000 to like 10,000, even though the graphics don't look as great, it is very fast. Now, the only downside to this is it requires an NVIDIA 650 Ti and above, so you have NV encode, and it uses a lot of CPU usage because you're running the Sunshine program in the background that changes all this modular stuff in the back. So yeah, it uses about a full one core of whatever you're using. So on this machine that I have eight cores, 16 threads, it's gonna run better than on my Zima board that only has four cores. Generally, it uses one core, so it uses 25% of CPU usage on this guy, while it's like maybe 8% or something on this one because it only takes up that one core from the eight. So what is this video about? Well, recently on the GNOME version 42 or in Ubuntu 22.04, they've released a new version of remote desktop which uses Pipewire. It still uses, I think, a underlining VNC in the background, but Pipewire compresses it differently where it's actually good. Now, my biggest gripe about Sunshine, which is near the performance I wanted to get, is that I have cursor lag. Uh, cursor lag on a desktop, especially even if you're playing an FPS, that cursor lag will kill you. Like, I cannot stand it when I'm using it as a desktop on my um, Moonlight installation because 
by the time I hit top right to close a program, what I think that my mouse should be at and my, where my actual mouse position is at, it's behind by a little, which causes me to either misclick or lag my brain or something. I don't know how to explain it, but that cursor lag really kills me. Now there is a way to hide it, which I've been doing, which is hide the main cursor from the desktop, reveal my desktop cursor, and I actually reduce, like eliminate that entire lagginess, but it doesn't, uh, allow for my cursor to change appearances so i don't know if i'm on a text box or if i'm resizing a windows because it doesn't change the icon to whatever i need so that's the downside to it but it does fix the cursor lag now in this new version of rdp or gnome remote desktop it actually fixes all that problem it not only does a pretty good job in compression and it does use about like again one core of your cpu it fixes the mouse lag which was one of my biggest issue and also allows me to stream media from the remote desktop session. So all in all, the new remote desktop or no remote desktop is actually very usable. I've been using it for the past couple of weeks for either my remote desktop on this guy or another machine that I have in the back just for testing and I have no problems whatsoever. Now, the downside between Moonlight and also a GNOME remote desktop, it requires you to have it plugged into a monitor, which is, is the downside to it because you can't have a full headless machine unless you purchase one of these dongles. Now this dongle is basically a, a dummy HDMI plug, so it thinks that it actually is connected to a monitor and it gives you up to 4K resolution. You can buy a three pack of these for like $8, which is what I've been using for these remote desktop sessions for a headless environment. So while you're using Sunshine, you do need to plug this into an NVIDIA graphic card. If you're using the new GNOME remote desktop, there is a way to get around it by using a dummy video driver, but it's easier just to purchase one of these and plug it in instead. Another thing about the two remote desktop sessions or even the third one, which is VNC, uh, it does not hide your session. If somebody turns on your monitor or if somebody plugs in a monitor to the actual desktop, they will see exactly what's going on compared to the XRDP where it actually builds a new session and nobody can see what's going on. So that's another downside. It's not a killer for me. Like it doesn't stop me from using it, but overall right now I've completely switched over to GNOME Remote Desktop. It's actually native into Ubuntu GNOME 42. So I don't have to install any additional software. All I have to do is just enable the prompt in the remote desktop setting, and that is it. I get the remote desktop. There is still the old VNC protocol just in case you need to use that protocol instead of the new remote desktop. But yeah, uh, either way, this new GNOME remote desktop has been a game changer for me, at least for remoting into my Linux desktop. Anyway, that is it for me, guys. I hope if you guys are planning to build a Linux machine and you want to be able to use it a little bit more, these little remote desktop hints would be able to help you guys. And yes, right now my go-to remote desktop is going to be GNOME remote desktop until something else changes because I might not be using GNOME all the time. Anyway, if you guys have any questions about this, hit me down in the comments below or join my Discord. If you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And as I say, my Nerd Cave, Hack till it hurts.